Are you starting your own business and need to fill in the tax registration questionnaire? If so, in this video you'll find a step-by-step -step guide on how to do it. Hi, my name is Melchior from Contest Tax Consulting and I myself have founded a company six times and I know this from many other founders as well. In the beginning, you have many things to do. One of the most important things is the registration at the tax office. Otherwise, there will be trouble later and you won't even have a tax number which you can write on your invoices. There are often many questions and uncertainties with this questionnaire for the tax registration. And because of that, I thought we'd just go through it together. I'll take you with me on my screen and we'll simply go through this entire questionnaire for tax registration together in Elster Online and I'll explain everything you need to know about each field. This here is the online interface of Elster. Elster is the online access to the tax office. And you should definitely have an Elster online access if you are self-employed because in here you can get the online tax registration. Here on the left side you can see the overview and under Formulare und Leistungen you'll see virtually all the forms that you can fill out here at Elster online. And of course this includes the entire tax registration, the so-called Fragebogen zur steuerlichen Erfassung. If we click on that, you can see that there's a whole series of questionnaires that you can fill out. In this video, I want to focus on sole proprietorships, Einzelunternehmen. If you are a solo self-employed person, so you want to be self-employed in the legal form of a Einzelunternehmen, this is the video for you. If you want to establish a GmbH or a UG or an association, for example, you can still watch this video and many things will be relevant for you as well. And also because we make this channel specifically for freelancers and solo self-employed. And that's why we'll walk through a case like that together today. That's also the reason why we click on this title here. We select the questionnaire for tax registration for Einzelunternehmen. On this page now we get a description of who this is for, that is commercial sole proprietorships, all self-employed and all freelance self-employed. The distinction is actually important. You should think about what you're registering as beforehand. Are you working commercially or are you doing freelance work? I have also recorded an in-depth video on this which I'm linking here in the top right corner. Feel free to check it out. I'm also going to be talking about some more in-depth videos here every now and then. I'll also link all of those videos in the description below. That means that if there's a topic at some point and I say there's a separate video on that, feel free to take a look at the bottom of the video description and check that out. But whether you are freelance or commercial, you should definitely think about that before you fill out the Fragebogen zur steuerlichen Erfassung. Also, if you want to start an agricultural or forestry business, then you're also in the right place. However, I suspect that if you do, you are definitely part of a small minority. Most of our viewers are freelancers or Gewerbetreibende. Farmers and foresters are, at least if I interpret the comments correctly, rather in the minority. But you're welcome to keep watching, you'll have the same thing to fill out. Okay, then we click on continue and then here we have the home page of the form. Maybe some general information on the structure of this form. You can see the rough overview at the top. First, we answer all the information, so all the data that you need to fill in. In the next step, you can check all your information again. That means you get an overview with all your input and you can check it again. And Elser will also point out if there is something missing or there are things contradicting one another. And only then can you send it. So this is basically your progress bar in this process. Of course, it is possible that you start, but then you need to take a break, say because you still want to clarify certain things, because you want to open a new account, because you want to find an accountant, etc. Then you can save this form at any time, leave it and continue later. That's no problem at all and here it's actually well worked out. If you want to know how much of the process is done and how much more you need to fill out, then you can just click on this round button here and then you see the entire form and your progress within it. In the past, you used to fill out this whole thing on paper and each of these points was a separate section and the whole form consisted of eight pages. Here we have the online form. Here you can approximately see how far you are and how long you will need to complete it. But you can just click on this and then just enter your information here. Now, let's start filling out this form together. What's nice here is that you can autofill things that you have already entered in Elster Online. When you registered with Elster Online, you may have already entered your name, your tax number, your address or other information. And you can simply use that information from the Elster Online master data. And for that, you click here on take from my profile. 
There you can see my name and my first name. And here you can simply click on use my profile and then it will use all the information from my profile. In the next step, you should enter your tax number or possibly apply for a new one. At this point, it is relatively important. You are starting a business. This means that you probably do not yet have a tax number for your self-employment. However, you may already have a tax number for your income tax. If you have already filed a tax return in the past, you will have a tax number on your tax statement and you enter that here. What you have to enter here is the Bundesland and your tax number. And then your responsible tax office will pop up automatically. If you have never filed a tax return and do not have a tax number yet, you can simply go to apply for a new tax number. To do this, you simply have to select the Bundesland and the responsible tax office. Which tax office is responsible for you is easily found by Googling. It is important here that you always use the address of the company. If you don't work at home and you want to register your self-employment somewhere else, for example, in a co-working space or in your own office, and this office is in a different district or another part of town than where you live, then you have to indicate the tax office where your business is located. For me, that's Charlottenburg. So I enter Berlin Charlottenburg here. And then I click on next page to go on. The next step, or actually the real first step, is all the information about your person. That means the taxpayer, so you trying to register as self-employed, need to enter all your information here. This is also exactly the page where Elster Online already pulls all the possible information from the master data. In my case, you can see that the title, surname and first name are already filled in. Additionally, you should enter your profession. I have now typed in that I'm a professional video man. Of course, you should enter your real profession here. Also, your date of birth and your religion are important. Why is religion important? In Germany, if you are a member of the church, you pay church tax. And this is of course relevant for the tax office, whether church tax should be levied or not. If you're not a member of church, you simply click on not liable to church tax. The next step is your tax number. I'm laughing a little bit because we're talking about your personal tax identification number and your UST tax identification number, which you need to apply for your tax number. That means that in Germany, as a self-employed person, you have three tax numbers, the tax number, a personal tax identification number and a Umsatzsteuer identification number. I have also recorded a separate video on what exactly the differences are and what you should use which number for. You can also find it linked below in the video description. If you're not 100% sure, feel free to check it out again. But what you should enter here is your identification number and your Umsatzsteuer identification number. Also, for the next step, your marital status is very important, of course. If you are married or in a registered partnership, you can file a joint tax return, meaning that your tax return now changes because you are self-employed. Because now you also have income from self-employment or your business. When did you get married or when did you get divorced or widowed? And since when this status exists? The next section is about the address. This is about the company address. So if the company address is not your residence address, then enter your company address here. This applies to the domestic address as well as possibly to the foreign address. You also have the possibility to enter a PO box. You can specify that here. The next step is about telephone, email and internet. These three pieces of information are optional. You don't have to give this information to the tax office, but sometimes it helps if it has your phone number or email address, because sometimes there are cases that are easier to clarify on the phone or via email than by mail. So you can give the information here to facilitate communication in certain cases. By clicking on next page, we get to the next step. In the next section, you have to fill in information about your spouse again. So your husband, wife or registered partner. Again, this includes the title, surname, first name, occupation, date of birth, religious affiliation, and so on. This is actually analogous to your information. This is relatively important because otherwise the tax office will have difficulties to issue a joint tax assessment. And for the exact identification, the personal tax identification number of your spouse is also important, which you can enter here. Also. You should enter an address if you do not live together. If you live separately, you can enter the address here. If you live together, just go to the next page. The next step is about your bank details 
and important at this point, your business bank account. There's no legal obligation to have a separate business bank account, but I can tell you from experience, both from my own experience and from the experience of our clients, that it is super highly recommended to have a separate business account. Because if you have a separate business account and you run all your business finances through it, that is all business income and expenses, then this just keeps things so much more organized and is already 50 to 60% of your bookkeeping done. And it saves you valuable time when it comes to preparing the tax return and putting all the documents together. Because at the end of the day, all you really have to do is look at the bank statements and also make sure that you're collecting those receipts that go with those transactions. There are also some business accounts that can do a little bit more and can help you in your everyday life. For example, the Contus business account. As a self-employed person, you always have the problem that you don't know 100% for sure how much money in the account actually belongs to you and how much you should put aside for taxes. And exactly this problem is solved by the Contus business account. Because the account automatically puts the tax aside with every transaction, that is every incoming and outgoing transaction. I've recorded a couple of videos on how exactly this works. I'll link them as a playlist here in the top right corner. Feel free to take a look at it. It's my personal recommendation that you use this as a business account. But of course, you can also use any other business account and enter your business bank details here. The next step is about tax advice. You don't have to have a tax advisor as a self-employed person. There's no legal obligation for this, but of course it can make sense. If you don't want to deal with your accounting and your tax return, etc., just get a tax consultant who will do it for you. At this point, we would like to point out that we, Contis Tax Consulting, are specialized online tax consultants for freelancers and self-employed. If you'd like to have a sparing partner, a competent advisor for your self-employment, who can take all these accounting and tax issues off your hand, then please have a look at our services. I'll post a link in the right top corner, but you can also find all the information listed below in the video description after the first link. Please feel free to have a look at it. And if that works for you, let's talk on the phone. Maybe we can help you out. I, of course, would be very happy if you were to put our name and address here. Of course, you can also put any other tax advisor here, or if you decide to do it all yourself, you can actually just leave these slots empty. Also, you only need to fill out the next step if you have a tax advisor. This is about the Empfangsbevollmächtigung. Your tax advisor can only act for you if he also receives the letters from the tax office. Otherwise, you will receive them and you'll have to forward them to your tax advisor first before he can take action. You should issue your tax advisor with an authorization to receive the letters. This will ensure that the letters from the tax office go directly to the tax advisor and not to you. If you want to instruct us, for example, you can enter our information here. If you prefer to do everything yourself, you can also just leave everything blank here. The next step is about your previous personal circumstances. You only need to fill this in if you have moved within the last 12 months. Then you need to fill in your previous address or if you have been registered with another tax office within the last three years, meaning if any other tax office was responsible for your income tax return. So that there is no overlapping, you should indicate here again where you were previously managed and possibly also your spouse. The next step gets really interesting because here you need to enter the type of work. You will need to provide the exact nature of your trade or work. To be honest, it says here that you have 200 characters of space, which is really not that much. Just briefly describe in a few words what you do for a living. More than an extended job description is not really possible here. And then in the next step, you should list the name of your company. Here. One thing is very, very important, and there's often confusion about this. As a Einzelunternehmen, which is not registered in the commercial register, the Handelsregister, you always use your personal name as the company name. You can't make up a fantasy name here. You can only choose a fantasy name if you also register yourself in the Handelsregister, which, however, has much higher bureaucratic hurdles and stricter requirements. If you are simply looking for a simple way to set up your own business, the name of your company is always your personal name. Also, it is important here 
required that you list the beginning of the activity, that is, on which day you started your self-employment. And if you do not work at home, so if your company headquarters is not also at home, you should list the address of the company here. You may have rented a separate office or a co-working space and your company may not be located at your home. In that case, you should list the address again here because your company tax office may be different from your private tax office. So in this case, you enter the address of your company here. If you work from home, you just leave these slots empty. The next step can probably be skipped by most of you. This is about the different locations of the company management, which means if your company has one registered office and the management has another registered office and you have more than one place of business. That's what freelancers, Gewerbetreibende or Einzelgewerbetreibende who are just starting out do not usually have at the beginning. You'd have to have a larger company and most of you do not have a different place of management. You can just skip this without any problems and you don't need to enter anything else. The same applies to step 9 when it comes to Betriebsstätten. If you don't have multiple places of business, you can just ignore this and move on to the next step. Exactly the same applies to step 10 and the Handelsregister Eintrag. As a freelancer, you don't have to register in the commercial register, so the whole thing doesn't apply anyway. If you are a Gewerbetreibende and you start as a one-man show or a one-woman show and everything is relatively small, you don't need to register in the commercial register. The next step is about the Gründungsform or form of incorporation. This question might be a bit surprising at first because most of you will be founding a new company for the first time. But there are several ways to start a business. There is the form of incorporation and then it could also be that you simply change the address of the registered office and have to register again for tax purposes. It could also be that you have bought a company and simply take over the company from a previous owner. Or maybe you're merging two businesses. Even then, you would have to fill out the tax registration questionnaire again. I do assume that most of you here have a startup, so you select Neugründung. Then you have to fill in the date of incorporation here and just leave the rest blank. If you buy your company and just take over that business, then you have to enter all the tax information, such as the address, etc., of the previous owner. The tax office will of course want to know if this is a new business or which business is now being transferred from whom to whom. Here you might have to provide information about who owned your business prior to you. The next step is not about the circumstances of your company in the past, but about your circumstances. If you were self-employed at some point in the last five years, self-employed means you had a Einzelunternehmen, a partnership, or you were in a corporation with a share of more than 1%, you have to state your previous business circumstances here. Of course, it could be that you were self-employed and that you are now continuing the whole thing after a break of two or three years or are continuing with something similar. The tax office, of course, wants to know that because there might still be a tax number and they could give you that same tax number again. If you have been self-employed at some point in the last five years, you need to enter that information here. If you have not been self-employed in the last five years, you can skip this step and click on next page. Section 13, the information on the determination of advance payments for income tax and UST tax is usually the point at which all self-employed people and all new entrepreneurs get lost. Here, it's a matter of stating roughly how much income you will have in the founding year as well as the following year. Because as a self-employed person, you have to make quarterly advance payments on income and UST tax. Of course, only if you have that corresponding income. And since we have seven types of income according to the German Income Tax Act, seven types of income are being queried. You have to specify which income you have from agriculture and forestry, from a commercial enterprise, which from self-employment. Important at this point regarding the Income Tax Act, any self-employed activity is the same as a freelance activity. So here we are talking about freelance work. Then. There is the thing of non-self-employed work. Non-self-employed work is working as an employee. Next question is about income from capital assets, income from renting and leasing, and other income such as pensions. There are seven types of income, and in your income tax return, you pay your income tax on all of your income, so on all seven types. Therefore, all seven types of income are being asked here. For the year of foundation, 
and for the following year, so for two years. And if you are married, you will be assessed together in most cases. For your spouse too, you have to enter this for the year of foundation and the following year. And that quickly leads to the fact that you can't just enter one or two numbers, but you actually get 28 slots to describe your expected income. And in my experience, you leave most of them empty because normally, you don't have seven types of income, but maybe one or two, three at the most. So if you're in the process of becoming self-employed right now, you just enter something in Gewerbebetrieb or self-employed work, depending on whether you are a business or a freelancer. What, and this is very important, you expect as profit. This is not about turnover. This is about profit. If you're starting a business part-time, or maybe you're starting a business full-time, but you're still employed on a part-time basis, you still enter your non-self-employed work here, for example. And you don't have to be too shy here. You really can leave slots empty here if you don't have anything to enter. It is also important that many founders overdo it a bit when it comes to the business plan. Great preliminary calculations are made and big profits are planned. My personal experience from six startups is that it usually takes much longer at the beginning than you think. Don't worry about being super precise here. We're not talking precise amounts down to the single euro or cents, but a rough estimate. So you can definitely round up or slightly down your numbers to the thousands-ish. We are really talking about the quarterly advance payments, which you can adjust at any time. If you now enter less because you think that it'll probably take a little longer, and then you realize that the profits are already flowing in the first or second year, you can always contact the tax office and have these advance payments adjusted upwards. Nothing of what's entered here is somehow set in stone. By the way, you can also enter other tax deductions below, in particular, special expenses and other tax deductions. There's yet another video about special expenses and other tax deductions in the description below. Special expenses are, for example, your retirement provision or health insurance contributions or your private liability insurance, etc. These are obviously tax deductible and you can also enter them for yourself and your spouse for the founding year and the year after that. And they may reduce your advanced income tax payment. The same applies to tax deductions. These are mainly extraordinary expenses and extraordinary burdens are usually health costs, so medical and hospital expenses, etc., which you can deduct from your taxable income. There's also an in-depth video on this in the video description. The next step is about your profit calculation method. By the way, there's also an in-depth video about this. As a self-employed person, you have two ways to determine your profit. One is the income surplus statement, and the other is the balancing sheet. By the way, the balancing is called Betriebsvermögensvergleich in the questionnaire. It would take too much time explaining, but it's basically exactly the same thing. I would strongly recommend that you choose the income surplus statement as long as you can. There's also an in-depth video on the topic, which I'll also link below in the video description. The important thing is that you can choose the income surplus statement if you are a freelancer or a Gewerbetreibende making less than 60,000 euros annual profit or 600,000 euros annual turnover. So if you are a Gewerbetreibende above these limits, you can't choose the surplus income statement and you have to draw up a business assets comparison or you do your bookkeeping according to the balance sheet. And then you have the option to choose a business year that differs from the calendar year. I personally don't recommend doing that, at least not if you're a small business. For some companies, it does make sense that the business year is not from January 1st to December 31st. Let's take a soccer club, for example. The soccer season usually goes from July 1st to the 30th of June, and therefore most soccer clubs have a financial year which more or less coincides with the season in which they play. That's why most soccer clubs, for example, calculate their profit from July 1st to June 30th and then draw up their balance sheet, their annual financial statements, as of the 30th of June. Now, if you're not a soccer club or you have other reasons why you should do it differently, I would strongly recommend that your business year correspond with the calendar year because otherwise it just makes extra work and has zero tax advantage. I would also like to skip the next step, step 15 at this point. It should not be relevant for most of you. This is specifically about construction services and most of you don't have a construction company. If you have anything to do with construction and need further information, you can also find a link here on the page where 
where you can find more information on the available options for you. But I'll skip this in this video because otherwise it would go beyond what's sensible here. The next step shouldn't matter to most of you either. It concerns the deduction of the wage tax. So how many employees do you have? How much income tax you pay? Where your employees work and so on. If you do not plan to have employees with social insurance in the beginning of your self-employment, just leave the whole thing blank. Even if you start up now and realize after half a year or a year that you'll need employees and want to hire them, you can still report all of this information later. If you don't plan to do it right away when you start up, leave it blank for now. The next page, so page 17, Angaben zur Anmeldung und Abführung der Umsatzsteuer, is the point where all new founders at the latest get completely lost. That's why we'll go through all these points together step by step. The first question is about the sales of the business as a whole. I will skip this point because it will not apply to the vast majority of you. The next point is all the more important. It's about estimating your sales, your projected sales. At this point, it is important that we're talking about sales and not about profit or income, as was the case a few questions ago. That means that you should indicate here your planned turnover in the foundation year and in the following year. Why is all of this important? There are certain options and choices that you have and that depend on your turnover. What we have already touched on is the option for Gewerbetreibende, whether to prepare a balance sheet or a surplus income statement. That's because you can only do that up to a certain profit or turnover limit. If you have more than 600,000 euros in annual sales, you have to prepare a balance sheet. That's why this information on sales is important. The turnover is also important for the choice whether to be a Kleinunternehmer, a small business owner, or not. In that case, it's important to know whether you are under 22,000 euros or 50,000 euros turnover. So just enter your planned sales here. And also important, round it up to the thousands and set the value a bit more conservatively. Don't be too optimistic. The next issue is the small business regulation. This is a topic you should definitely deal with if you are under 22,000 euros or 50,000 euros annual turnover or planned turnover. You will find a very detailed video about this linked below in the video description. And if you are just starting up, especially in a part-time model, this could be interesting for you. Then you should definitely watch that video and then decide whether or not you're going to take advantage of the Kleinunternehmer Regelung here. The next question is actually quite nasty and has not been in the tax questionnaire for very long. And that is the question of the payment burden or surplus. This is really quite difficult to estimate. In general, sales and profits are quite difficult to estimate when you start up a new business because you don't have any experience yet and you don't know how your business or product will be accepted in the market. However, here you should give an indication of how much UST tax you expect to pay or expect to get back from the tax office on the basis of the advance UST tax return and the pre-tax tax surplus. I would recommend that you proceed as follows. You roughly take your planned profit, for example, 50,000 euros annual profit, and then you take the tax rate you expect to have on average. So if you don't have any exemption or reduction rules for your performance, then 19% is the traditional UST rate. If you plan 50,000 euros annual profit per year, you simply calculate 50,000 euros times 19%, which is 9,500 euros. And then you enter here payment burden, zahl last, estimated at 9,500 euros. The main point here is that the tax office can tell you in which frequency you should submit your advance UST return. Of course, it could be that you plan to invest in the first year and don't make any profits at all that year, but losses. Then you can also have expenses and UST tax on these investments. And you can then claim that as part of the advance Umsatzsteuer tax return. For example, if you plan to make a loss of 10,000 euros in the first year, then you click on Überschuss estimated and take 10,000 euros times 19% and just type in here surplus estimated at 1,900 euros. Then you have told the tax office that you even expect to get taxes back. The next question is about Umsatzsteuer exemptions. Not all sales are subject to sales tax. There are certain products which are all in paragraph 4 of the Umsatzsteuer Tax Act and these are exempt from UST tax. These are, for example, services of doctors, 
but also services in connection with insurance. Also, certain lecturing activities for universities and colleges are also exempt from UST tax. If you have that kind of revenue, you usually know that, and then you can enter that here. If you're not 100% sure if you do, feel free to leave it blank. By the way, the exact same thing applies to the reduced UST tax rate. The standard UST tax in Germany is 19%. However, there are certain services that are only subject to 7% UST tax, and you should also enter them here. Common examples are food or books. So if you want to sell books, you only have to pay 7% UST tax on these books, and you should also enter this here. If you're not 100% sure about that, as always, just leave it blank. The next question is about the average rate taxation. Admittedly, this is quite a rare thing, and so I'll just skip it here because otherwise the video will be much longer. The next question, however, is interesting, and it's about imputed or actual taxation. I have also recorded an in-depth video on this. You can also find it linked below in the video description. At this point, I can only tell you that you should choose the actual taxation for as long as possible, because it also depends on your revenue limits. It is important at this point that the actual taxation in the questionnaire for the tax registration is not actual taxation, but Versteuerung nach Vereinnahmten Entgelten. If you meet all the requirements, you can select here taxation according to received payments. The next question is about the UST identification number. For business relations with companies from abroad, especially from the EU, you need a UST number to prove that you are a legitimate entrepreneur. And this applies to both directions. If you have business relations with companies from other EU countries, you need this number. This also applies if you are a customer, for example, of software tools. Google, Apple and Facebook, for example, are all based in Ireland and therefore in other EU countries. And if you want to use their software providers or platforms for your self-employment, you need a UST number. However, you also need one if you have customers from other EU countries. If you have customers in Austria, France or Denmark, you need a UST number and you can easily apply for it here in the tax registration questionnaire by simply checking this box here. It doesn't cost anything. I would always recommend ticking it if it were me because it simply doesn't hurt and even if you don't need it now, you might need it someday. The last question about UST tax is about the tax liability of construction and cleaning companies. Since I assume that most of you don't have a construction or cleaning company, I will leave that out here as well. If you have any questions specifically about this again, feel free to post a comment below this video. The next step, which is item number 18, is about UST fiscal unity. I would like to skip this whole area because the UST fiscal unity is only important to you if you have several companies and if these companies somehow do business with each other. Since I assume that most of you don't have multiple companies, I think we'll skip this step. And you can skip it as well if you are just simply self-employed. The next bit, number 19, is about a special taxation procedure for companies which are active in the field of e-commerce. This means that if you're a businessman or a businesswoman dealing with mail order or physical goods, then the so-called one-stop shop procedure applies to you. This whole topic of taxation of mail order businesses is relatively complex and has changed quite a bit in the last few years. And it is still changing quite a bit because this is a really booming market. There are specialized tax consultants and service providers who do nothing else than take care of the taxation of mail order businesses. That's why I would like to refer you to tax due at this point and not explain it myself and go into great detail. I'll link the YouTube channel of Tax Due below in the video description. There are many exciting explanation videos that explain exactly all of these mechanisms and tax challenges. That's why I would just like to refer to it at this point because you should definitely deal with these tax challenges before you fill out the questionnaire for tax registration here. And that's why I'm just going to jump to the next section here. And also, section 20 deals with the sales in the area of trading goods over the internet. So this is exactly the same thing. For this too, you should first go to Tax Do and watch their videos. Then, if you know what you're getting into, you'll also know what to enter here. The next step, number 21, is about the documents that you could submit to the tax office in addition to this tax registration questionnaire. This is, for example, 
the power of representation of your tax advisor, or the power to receive mail for your tax advisor, or also the direct debit mandate that you can leave with the tax office. It often makes sense that you give the tax office a direct debit mandate and allow them to debit all tax payments from your account. There's also an in-depth video on what the benefits are and how exactly you do that. I'll link that in the video description as well. And once you fill this out, you're through. Congratulations, you've now filled out everything you need to register for tax purposes in Germany as a self-employed person. This means that in the next step, you can click on check everything again and look at all the information again and see if everything is correct. And in the next step, send this questionnaire to the tax office. What actually happens when you click on send? Then all information is at the tax office and the tax office can start to register you for tax purposes and manage you as a self-employed entrepreneur. This whole process takes two to six weeks. It varies greatly from tax office to tax office and generally how busy the tax offices are at that point. What's important at this point is that in response to this questionnaire, you will receive a letter from the tax office and this letter will contain your tax number. And this tax number is also the number that you should use in the invoices that you write. And it's possible that you are slightly rushed. You may have already started to work. The customers might already be pushing and want their invoice, but you can't issue an invoice yet because you don't have a tax number. In my experience, it's worth calling your tax office after about a week and a half to two weeks after your registration. Because what often happens is that the system has already assigned you a tax number, but you have simply not been informed yet through the letter. And in this case, the clerk can give you your tax number over the phone. I hope this video has helped you to cope a little better with the questionnaire for tax registration. Congratulations on sticking it through. That's exactly the kind of stamina you'll need in your self-employment. But if you need help with your self-employment, for example, with your bookkeeping, and the tax returns and so on, I would be very happy if we could help you with that. We are, as I said, specialized online tax consultants for freelancers and self-employed, and all the information about our services can be found here. Please also have a look at our online community for self-employed. Everything you need to know and how to sign up, I explain in this video. Or just have a look at our other videos about accounting and tax issues for self-employed people. You can find one video here.